Tonight, the state's hospitality industry raises concerns over remaining restrictions and fears of explosion from a car fire causes the closure of Broken Hill overpasses. From our seven Spencer Golf Studios, your nightly news with Ruby Kamein begins now. Good evening. Many South Australians are still breathing sighs of relief following yesterday's announcement our borders are reopening next month. But while many are happy with the plan, some have raised concerns over the restrictions still imposed on hospitality venues. Getting ready to welcome visitors and family from interstate. The tourism industry busy preparing for an influx of bookings before Christmas. It's a good thing for everyone to aim towards. Obviously there's still lots of detail to be worked through, but we really appreciate the fact that the government has released this date early. The sector hit hard by the uncertainty of border closures during the past 18 months. The ticks are saying there is an overwhelming sense of positivity from operators. Confidence has been one of the biggest casualties during COVID. Um, and this gives consumers confidence to start booking. This gives businesses confidence to start taking those bookings, to lock them into the calendar. However, not everyone is happy. The Australian Hotels Association scathing of the roadmap and the many restrictions that will remain. Well, when it was released yesterday, we were, we were very disappointed. And, and, in, and in fact, our major concern is that when you, when you dug into what was announced, there's very little there. Also saying regional operators are being punished for the sins of the metropolitan area. The current restrictions we have were in, implemented as a result of the Modbury lockdown in July. Mm. Now, Modbury is a suburb of Adelaide. It's got nowhere near Port Lincoln or Streaky Bay or, or Woodner. The state's police commissioner standing by the current level of restrictions. The decision has been made to retain these current level of restrictions uh, whilst we are preparing the community for the introduction of COVID-19. Dylan Smith, 7 Spencer Gulf News. A major Broken Hill Road was closed for more than 18 hours overnight after a car caught fire while carrying a cylinder of highly flammable gas. Emergency services setting up an exclusion zone with serious concerns the ute was going to explode. Engulfed in flames and enveloped in black smoke. As emergency services arrived, it became clear this was no ordinary car fire. The youth bursting into flames on Bonanza Street at quarter to three yesterday afternoon and a settling cylinder in the back tray. Once it's heated and it releases into the atmosphere, it's, uh, it, it detonates uh, quite explosively. The driver shocked but amazingly unharmed. He's extremely fortunate that he didn't suffer uh, substantial injuries. A 200 metre exclusion zone in place as firefighters spent two hours extinguishing the blaze, the cylinder needing constant cooling to prevent an explosion. On top of all that, now we had a gas leak, so which is what we had to monitor and keep the exclusion zone in place until today. We we're able to hand the site back to council. The closure of the overpasses causing lengthy delays to the south. To be closed for that time, uh, it, it was uh, a safety measure more than anything else. Firefighters again reporting some drivers chose to ignore roadblocks. We are trying to keep ourselves safe on that road, but we're trying to keep the community at large safe. So please just help us help you by staying out of those areas. The incident showing dangers can't always be seen. Lachlan Itter, 7 Spencer Golf News. Recreational fishers across the Spencer Gulf are reminded about their obligations when it comes to fishing blue swimmer crabs. During the previous long weekend, authorities handed out $11,000 worth of fines on one day alone. A stern warning to everyone to protect the population of aquaculture in our region. The Primary Industries Minister asking recreational fishers to make sure they are following bag limits when out on the water. There was a patrol that went out checking people and was issued uh, 12 fines in relation to people taking uh, either undersized or too many blue swimmer crabs. During the previous long weekend, more than 400 crabs were seized by just one patrol in the Gulf St Vincent's. The seizure totaling more than $11,000 worth of on-the-spot fines. These people were very much aware of the rules. They had uh, the measuring equipment, etc., with them. Uh, they weren't using it. This was a blatant mistrust of uh, the public. One fisher was also issued an additional fine for having undersized King George Whiting. 
The minister, finding the results disappointing, hoping Spencer Gulf recreational fishers heed his calls to follow limits. Get yourself the measuring equipment required. Be aware of uh, what your requirements are. And a simple way to do that is download the, the Fishing SA app. That has all the details for particular species. Information about bag limits for crabs and King George Whiting can also be found on Purser's website. Mark Zeta, 7 Spencer Gulf News. SA Water has begun consultation sessions with the Eyre Peninsula community over its proposed desalination plant at Billy Lights Point. Drop-in sessions are scheduled over the next two weeks in Port Lincoln, Cleve, Kimber, Sojuna and Streaky Bay. A dedicated industry reference group has also been created to help drive discussions with industry. For more information on the project, visit the SA Water website. Still to come tonight, new technology developed to pinpoint groundwater sites in the Flinders Ranges. And the MFS and a road crash survivor deliver safety messages to Mid-North students. Welcome back. Hawker and the surrounding communities stand to benefit from new technology, which can pinpoint the location of precious groundwater. The technology involves remote sensing and imagery from satellites orbiting above Australia. Edward McCarroll reports. You never know the worth of water until the well runs dry. But a UniSA researcher is making sure that doesn't happen for various communities in the Flinders Ranges. Water resources, as I said, are very, very important for sustaining the activity, like, you know, the mining, the environmental community. Dr. Allah Ahmed has mapped out Hawker and the surrounding region into three distinct classifications for groundwater stored in fractured rock. He has done this by entering satellite imagery, geospatial information and existing topography maps into a software to then identify potential aquifers. So the high topographic area is like, you know, the boundary of the catchment and you have the low topography inside it. And there is a flow of the water from the high topography to low topography to recharge the aquifer. This new technology aiming to improve on existing groundwater assessment techniques that involve extensive drilling. The current method said to be expensive, time consuming and often a guessing game. Implementing it will potentially give communities better access to groundwater which makes up approximately 17% of Australia's available water resources. Dr Ahmed is excited to expand his research further to include surrounding areas that see greater droughts. The MFS Road Awareness Program is travelling through the state's mid-north this week. Today, Seven Spencer Gulf News visited Oruru Area School, where an MFS firefighter and a road crash survivor delivered a powerful message to students. Lockie Miller was just 21 years old when his life changed forever. He was driving home from work just 60 kilometres south of Darwin when a car towing a boat lost its insecure load. Lockie unable to avoid the load and losing control of his vehicle. Um, the main artery that's been opened up that supplies my brain and blood on the right side of my throat there. So I was on the side of the road, blood going everywhere. Just by chance there was a person coming up the direction that saw it all. My neck was broken at C4 and 5 and my back was broken T7 to 10. Following the crash, he was in a coma for 38 days with a 5% chance of survival. But today he is a road crash survivor, telling his story to students across the region as part of the MFS Road Awareness Program. Sharing your story, knowing that you can help people make safer decisions on the road because they don't want to go through the same pain and suffering that myself and my family will go through for the rest of our lives kind of stuff. So it almost makes it worth what happened. The Mid-North Tour today stopping off at Oruru Area School. For this MFS Community Education Officer, it's delivering a powerful message to young people in his hometown. I, I grew up here, um, my parents are still up on the family farm up near Eurelia there, so to get back to the school and, and present to your local community is, is certainly something that's a, a, a bit more special and, and it's great, you know, we, we just want to come back here and, and share the message. That message being, you can choose to take a risk, but you can't choose the consequences. Just I suppose try to get home safely and, and think of everyone as your mate, because you're driving down the road, you want all your mates to get home safely, you don't want anyone not to get home safely, so look after everyone on the road as it's your mate I suppose. Katrina Musson, 7, Spencer Golf News. A Port Augusta GP with the RFDS has been announced as the recipient of the 2021 Rural Register of the Year Award. The accolade recognising an individual who has demonstrated outstanding leadership and advocacy 
in the field of rural and remote medicine. Recognising a man soaring to new heights. Dr James Padley presented with one of the Royal Flying Doctor Service's highest honours. Really appreciate the acknowledgement. Uh, it's an award for leadership and advocacy uh, for rural training pathways, both for medical students and junior doctors. Dr Padley says he is humbled by the award and takes his hat off to other rural doctors who are also working very hard, but not always acknowledged for it. Part of my role is to provide advice for people living in rural and remote areas of the state and when needed to respond to emergency call-outs. In addition to his work with the RFDS, Dr Padley also works with the University of Adelaide as a rural career mentor, inspiring more doctors to come work in the country. Demonstrating such commitment is why it's been chosen for this year's award and it is presented with the knowledge that it's been achieved at a time when the impacts of COVID-19 have been particularly challenging for all registrars and health professionals. Dr Padley says his country upbringing combined with exposure to rural practices through clinical placements ultimately inspired him to become a rural doctor. Being a doctor in the country is, is what I love as well. Uh, so working with people in, in the outback and in smaller towns and working in a team of people who in uh, rural hospitals or with the RFDS is just fantastic. Edward McCarroll, 7 Spencer Golf News. The Barrier District's top cop is moving on after leading officers through the Far West's COVID outbreak. Superintendent Andrew Splite spending his last day in town tomorrow after two years in the job. He's named last year's border operations and Wilcannia's outbreak among operations he's proud to have overseen. We've seen significant uh, reductions in most of our crime categories, as well as our uh, property crime seen some significant uh, reductions. So really proud of the efforts that uh, the local police all across the district have done. He'll leave Broken Hill for a similar role in the larger Riverina district. Stay with us after the break. Port Lincoln's Tunarama prepares for its 60th festival and a coastal Spencer Gulf spot to be potentially crowned Australia's top town. Hello again. The 60th edition of Tunarama was officially launched in front of key stakeholders last night. This year's festival was cancelled due to the COVID pandemic. However, organisers are confident next year's event will be a success. Tunarama coming back to Port Lincoln in January. The famous festival outlining its program to sponsors at a launch event last night. We are just so grateful that we've got sponsors that have stuck by us and can see our vision. And being our 60th, we've just worked for this so hard and we just want this to happen. Next year's event, a special milestone for the organisation. Its president saying it will be good for the city to have the festival back. Looking forward to seeing this town come alive over the January long weekend. Uh, we missed it last year and we're going to be back with a bang this year. The world-renowned Tuna Toss and other favourite events will be on show. Organisers have also included some new ones. So we don't have boat building, we have, but things have kennel building, which is, I think in itself, really exciting. It's really challenging, which is what we need. While organisers acknowledge next year's edition will be different to previous years, they're confident locals and visitors will enjoy what the committee has planned. Different isn't always bad. I mean, I think that what we've got planned is going to be exciting. It's going to be compact. It's going to be full of excitement and full of events. Tunarama will release more information about its ticketing systems for the festival closer to the date. Dylan Smith, 7 Spencer Gulf News. The coastal town of Moonta will soon learn if it will be named the best in Australia after being recognised as South Australia's top tourism town this year. The Copper Coast Mayor says being considered on a national scale is an achievement in itself. Within arm's reach of the national title, Moonta could be recognised as Australia's top town this week. There were some really quality towns up against it, but we all know that Moonta is a, is a great town and it is a great place to have your holidays. Earlier this year, Moonta was named the state's top tourism town, awarded for its beautiful beaches, rich heritage and history and popular tourist attractions. Now it will be up against the top town in each state, including Noosa, Queensland, Catherine in the NT, Ballarat, Victoria, Busselton, WA, Mudgee, New South Wales and New Norfolk in Tasmania. What Moonta is, is the people and the community and, and I think this is a testament to them and fingers crossed, they'll be winners. 
The Copper Coast Mayor, hopeful Moonta will win. Always hopeful, always got my fingers crossed, you know, and it's it's a testament to the Moonta community. It's the event will be live streamed tomorrow from around 12.30pm with the winner to be announced. If it's not named, uh, I think that the Moonta people can be really proud that they were the South Australian top tourist town and are even being considered amongst um, the other award winners. So it, it is a great achievement for Moonta. Katrina Musson, 7, Spencer Golf News. Schools and community organisations in Wyala are invited to help council decorate the boxes around several Christmas trees. With only less than two months away until the holidays, council is asking everyone to paint a mini mural to be wrapped around the boxes. It's an effort to bring some Christmas cheer to the wider Wyala community. Council now taking expressions of interest to help paint this year's boxes that will be placed below the city's Christmas trees. So uh, that's been something that's been in the pipe works for a fair while now. Um, sort of ideas that have been thrown around by different people. The idea is to get people from the community, from the public, um, to decorate them. The project is the brainchild of council worker Kane Boss, who saw a similar project elsewhere and wanted to bring it to the Steel City. Citizens asked to help paint a mural or a design that will wrap around the boxes. The idea is uh, we have uh, MDF templates, which will be um, just blank, and then they deck out them any, any way they like, and then they drop them back to us and we can attach them to the, um, to the planted boxes. With only less than two months away until Christmas, Council wants residents to get into the holiday spirit with the designs. Anyone can get involved, we're really encouraging community groups. Um, there are 23 boxes, so lots of groups can get involved. Anyone interested in designing a box is welcome to email Council for more information. Mark Zeta, 7 Spencer Golf News. Sporting clubs across the Spencer Gulf are now welcome to apply for a new round of the Active Club program. Organisations can apply for grants of up to $3,000. The program assists in the purchase of new equipment, uniforms, protective gear and things related to the club's sporting activities. Applications close on November 17. For more information, visit the Office for Recreation, Sport and Fishing's website. Stay with us after the break. Lachlan Itter will have all the latest prices at the Bowser and we'll have the weather details with Alex Sykes. Welcome back. It's been another week of petrol pump pain, with prices going up across our entire region. But some areas have been hit harder than others. Here's Lachlan Itter with the full details in Fuel Watch. There is some good news to go with the bad, and that is the rates prices are increasing have actually slowed compared to last week. Right across the Gulf, unleaded is now above $1.60 a litre, but we're generally looking at two cent increases. Last week, most areas were going up by four cents. Port Perry and Kadena continue to be the pick of the bunch, both $1.62 a litre. Wyala and Port Augusta claim an equal second, just a smidge under $1.64 in those areas. Port Lincoln is bucking the trend and has seen the largest jump, up almost five cents to $1.65 a litre. Broken Hill, well, we're in a different league, already averaging $1.70 a litre. But we're all better off than Adelaide, unleaded selling for $1.75. In the hills, there are outlets selling for more than $1.80 a litre. Switching gears to diesel and similar patterns emerge. Again, we're talking two cent increases for most areas. Kadena has, however, seen a four cent jump to $1.61. Still the cheapest, slightly behind Port Pirie. Broken Hill also seeing a larger than average increase, sitting just under $1.69 a litre. For the rest, $1.63 in Port Lincoln and Port Augusta and $1.65 in Wyala, $1.60 in the Big Smoke. So worth topping up the tank if you're headed to Adelaide this weekend. End. Bringing things home with auto gas, where after a turbulent few weeks, prices have stabilised somewhat. On the York Peninsula, numbers are still going up. Port Perry now at $1.11 a litre, Kadena nudging $1.17. The best of the rest, Port Lincoln and Wyala, they're both unchanged and just under a dollar. Now remember that these prices are the regional averages and do not reflect any one particular outlet. And if you do spot unleaded diesel or auto gas cheaper, be sure to let us know on our Facebook page. Time now to take a look at what's happening in the weather. Here's Alex Sykes. 
Thanks, Ruby. Well, we needed the umbrella today with showers across the region. A short time ago, there was a severe thunderstorm warning for parts of the northwest and northeast pastoral districts, as well as a fire weather warning for the Eastern Air Peninsula and Flinders forecast districts. From 3 p.m. today, Port Augusta was 29, Kadena was 30, and Cooper PD was 38 degrees. Looking further out across the region, Alwala was 28, Port Lincoln was 24 degrees, Broken Hill 33, Port Pirie was 29, Adelaide had a shower two and was 27, Woodner was 31, Cleef was 30, Clare was just 21 degrees. Taking a look at the satellite image now, rain, showers and thunderstorms across the eastern and northern parts of South Australia with it, in, with it intense in the north, some cloud building in the west bringing further showers and storms. Moving on to tomorrow's weather outlook now and we'll start with the Gulf waters. Northwesterly winds 15 to 20 knots, seas 1 to 2 metres and south to southwesterly swell below 1 metre. Port Lincoln showers increasing set to reach 21 degrees, Cleve 28, Woodner a shower 2 and 33. Well will reach 32, Port Augusta a possible storm 35 degrees, Kadena showers and 28. Port Perry shower 2 set to reach 33 degrees there. Showers in Clare and 30 and Broken Hill showers and a possible storm with 31 degrees. Taking a look further through the week now, a shower or two in Port Pirie, Port Lincoln, Kadena and Adelaide on Friday. Partly cloudy in Port Augusta, mostly sunny in Broken Hill. To the all-important weekend weather now, Port Augusta and Port Pirie partly cloudy in 21, 19 in Wyala and Kadena. Sunny conditions on Sunday across parts of the region, Port Lincoln, Cooper Pedy and Adelaide mostly sunny. Looks like those showers are clearing up on the weekend and that's all the weather from me for tonight. It's back to you, Ruby. Wonderful. Thanks for that, Alex. And that's the local news this Wednesday evening. Thanks for joining us. I'll have updates later. Until then, enjoy your evening. Good night.